We think about praying, but we simply don't have the discipline to pray. Well, welcome to the One Cry Podcast. I'm Kyle Reno. This is Bill Elif, and we get the privilege of hosting this every week. And listen, our heart is to, I pray this podcast really helps awaken a longing for revival and spiritual awakening and and how you can be a part of that. So every week we try to give you some truths around that and also hear some testimonies of things that God has done or is doing uh, even in our nation. And so today we're really kickstarting a few weeks, Bill, talking about hindrances, Mm -hmm. things that might hinder your prayer life and things we see in the scripture about that. And hey, man, Mm -hmm. there's things in life in general that that, that could be a hindrance. And so, you know, I I remember when I was a a kid, we had 40 kids on our block. And and uh, one day, Leslie Zoff, Leslie, if you're out there, <laughs> call me. He may be in prison by now. I don't know, but uh, we, should, we should or all have been. Right. Yeah. But anyway, Leslie got an old Plymouth Barracuda yeah. into the car, and and uh, it was sitting in the front of his house, and it wasn't running right. And he said, Billy, he said, you want to help me take this engine apart and I was probably 12 years old <laughs> sure. and I got a wrench and that, well, this was a blast. I just started taking things out and throwing yeah. them. I didn't even ask him, you know, right. I mean, two or three hours later, his front yard was covered with car parts. And then my dad whistled and it was time for supper. And I said, see you, Leslie. <laughs> and gone. I was gone. And I never came back. Oh, wow. And that stuff set on his, uh, to the great dismay of all the neighbors. <laughs> Sat in his front yard for months and months and months. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's just a picture to me of sometimes we do stuff with a desire to be helpful, right. but it doesn't lead to any productive change. Right. And I think this can happen in our prayer life. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I think there's ways that we can want to pray, long to see change happen, uh, but we're not praying aright. So several years ago, uh, Pray Magazine asked me to do an article on hindrances to prayer. In other words, are there are there some things, some ways that we pray or don't pray, fail to pray, that hinder prayer? And I said, man, I've never thought about that. Let me study it. And as I studied it, I was amazed to find at least 12 different hindrances to prayer. So for the next two weeks, we're gonna we're gonna talk about those six of them today, and and six of them next week. And and here's the first hindrance. Are you ready? And I'll put these in the forms of questions so you can examine your own heart. Number one, are you simply praying? Now, James said it like this in James four three: You do not have because you do not ask. I mean, you're just not praying. I remember years ago, my wife and I needed a car real badly, and uh, and we didn't have enough money to buy any kind of car. And I was sitting with one of my godly mentors in my church, and I said, man, I don't know what to do. He looked at me, and he said, well, pastor, he said, have you prayed about it? <laughs> and I, I really was tempted to lie. Uh, so I could come off spiritual, but I, I I knew I couldn't fool this guy. And I said, you know, uh, Wayne, I I really haven't. He said, well, maybe you ought to begin there. So that night, Holly and I sat down and we prayed, Lord, give us a car. We don't care what it is, just, you know, something reliable. And then at the very end of the prayer, I said, now, Lord, I, I, I know I don't, whatever you provide is fine, but I'd really love a Malibu station wagon that was loaded. And my wife looked up at me and said, what are you doing? I thought, I said, well, he knows. I mean, he he knows my heart. The next morning at 10 o'clock, a a leasing agent uh, in our church called and he said, uh, hey, do you need a car? And I said, did Wayne talk to you? He said, no. He said, I saw your wife stranded on the side of the road twice. And uh, I figured maybe you're struggling uh, with that. And I said, well, yeah, we really are. He said, well, what kind of car do you need? Uh, you've got all these kids. And I, it was the day before minivans. He said, could you use a station wagon? I said, yeah. He said, well, last night God moved on my wife and I's heart to, to lease a car for you for the next three years. 
and we've got a brand new Malibu station wagon sitting on the showroom floor. I'll have it to you by three o'clock. <laughs> now, that hasn't happened since quite like that. But God, I think, allowed that, orchestrated that to just teach us. You don't have because you're, you're simply not praying. You know, many of us talk about prayer. We say we're praying. Somebody comes by with a need and we say, oh, I'll pray for you. And then we never pray. We think about praying, but we simply don't have the discipline to pray. So here's the first question. Are you simply praying? Now, here's a second question that could be a hindrance to prayer. Are you praying simply? You say, Bill, what do you mean by that? Well, let, let's look at the words of Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 7, when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do. They suppose they will be heard for their many words. Don't be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask them. They suppose that they would be heard. So here's these just think about this. These Pharisees who prayed every day because it was a duty to them, but they were never heard by the Father uh, because they were praying to be seen by others. They, and they were not just praying in simplicity. Years ago, my father was a pastor in the town I was born, a little South Arkansas town. And he started a prayer meeting at the lumber mill uh, that went on for eight years, I believe, every Tuesday at 5.30 a.m. <clears throat> One of the men that came was a man named Red Baker. And Red uh, sold suits at the, at the uh, men's store in town, and, and Red stuttered real badly. And he came to the prayer meeting, but he never prayed. And uh, he came to my father real humbly one day and said, JT, he said, I just, <clears throat> I don't know how to pray. And I'm afraid if I start praying that I'll stutter. And uh, my dad wisely said to him, he said, Red, I tell you what, next time you're moved to pray, just say, thank you, Lord. Because you are thankful, aren't you? So I'm so thankful. So it took a few weeks. One uh, morning, he heard Red Baker say, thank you, Lord. And then he began to pray more and more. And you know what? He discovered that as he prayed, he didn't stutter. I'm not saying that's always true, but later Red Baker surrendered to preach. And uh, when I was 17, by the way, the end of the story is he hired me to be his youth and music pastor, and he let me preach a 17-year-old boy once every month to learn how to preach. I owe so much to that man who learned that you can just pray simply. Just pray simply. You don't have to have fancy words. Uh, you can just pray simply in conversational ways. The Lord knows your heart. And maybe what's uh, keeping you from prayer is that you feel you have to impress God somehow by what you're praying. Here, here's, a, here's a third uh, thing that could hinder your prayer. Are you entering in to the presence of God when you pray? Now, here's how Jesus said this. When you pray, go into your inner room and close your door and pray to your Father who's in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That one verse transformed my prayer life when I began to understand it. I have a mental picture of, of walking through a door into a great foyer turning around and shutting the door and turning around in that foyer and I'm in the throne room of Jesus and I look at the Father and I, I pray to Him. And by the way, the first thing I always find myself doing is adoring Him. Hallowed be Thy name. Yeah, how could you not do that when you really enter in? Uh, Samuel Chadwick said that hurry is the death of of prayer. Now just think about that. Hurry is the death of prayer. Uh, R.A. Torrey said, much of prayer is not prayer at all because we run in and we're not even, we're not even conscious of who we're praying to. We're just shouting words. 
Uh, so there's something about pausing to enter in and realize I am in the presence of the creator of the universe, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the God who can do anything, and, and focusing my mind and my heart on him and then addressing him. People say to me sometimes, I don't, I don't feel like, you know, I'm really talking to God. Well, the reason may be you're not. Uh, so there's learning how to enter into the presence of God will keep your prayers from being hindered. Here's a fourth question, and that is, are you praying spirit-initiated prayers? Spirit-initiated, God-initiated prayers. You say, Bill, what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, listen to Jesus when he was on earth. He said, when you lift up the Son of Man, these are his words, then you will know that I am he and I do nothing on my own initiative. I speak the things, and we could also add speak in prayer the things the Father has taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He's not left me alone. I always do the things that are pleasing to him. And I speak the things which I have seen with my Father. Wow. Jesus lived a God-initiated life, even in prayer. So think of it this way. Prayer is a loop. Real spiritual prayer starts in heaven. And when we walk into the presence of God and we say, Lord, what do you want me to pray about today? What, what's on your mind? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, what do you want to do? I listen to the Father. I let His Spirit initiate prayers in my heart and, and faith in my heart. And I'm literally praying back to Him prayers that He's initiated. And I want to tell you something. God always answers prayers that He initiates. And you say, well, why, why would God even put us in the loop? Well, because He's training us. He's raising up sons and daughters, just like you train your children. We're going to rule and reign with him. And he wants us to learn how to walk in perfect union and perfect communion with him at all times. So are you praying a spirit-initiated prayers? And, and just a, a practical application of that is when you walk in the presence of the Lord, listen. Don't just start listing off. I, I don't think that... If we saw this rightly, we would just walk in and say, now, Lord, I got a list of things to do. Bam, 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 bam. See ya. I only got five minutes. See ya. I'm out of here. I just don't think I, that's the way it would work. Now, I know all day long we should be praying. I'm going into meetings, say, Lord, uh, you know, lead this meeting, whatever contribution you want me to make. I'm yours. Use me in this meeting. That's a bullet prayer. Uh, but when we walk into the presence of God, listen to the Lord and cooperate with him. Here's a fifth thing, and this is very important, that hinders prayer. Are you aligning your motives with God's? Now, James is very specific about this in James 4. He says, you ask and you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulteresses, he says, a pretty strong word. And he's writing to Christians here. You do not know that friendship, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it's being done in heaven. Not my will. I'm not coming in here, Lord, to try to, uh, you know, uh, pull your arm and convince you to do what I want done. I can, I can pour out my, my heart and my grief and my pain and my need. But at the end of the day, I want to say like Jesus, Lord, thy will be done. And I want my motives to be aligned with your motives. God gives no promise to bless our plans. <laughs> and, and so often we come in, we say, well, let's have a minute of prayer. We have a meeting. We make a huge decision. And at the end of the meeting, we say, now, now Lord, bless this 
this plan we came up with. And I just think in heaven, the Lord is saying, he's shaking his head and saying, boys, you just don't understand. I had such a greater plan. I had so much for you. And and uh, you just didn't take time to listen to me and to align your motives. At the end of that Lord's Prayer, uh, Jesus finishes with this benediction. Thine is, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Not mine is the kingdom, not ours is the kingdom. This is for your kingdom, your power, your glory. That's why we're praying these specific things. And you're never on safer ground, by the way, than when you pray the scripture, because the scripture is God's will, right? And so when we align ourselves with the will of God as it's seen in the scripture, and as the Lord impresses us by his spirit, uh, we're going to have prayers that are what James talks about, the effectual, fervent prayers that accomplish much. And there's one one more that I want to see, and then we'll see some more next next podcast. Are you praying to be seen by men? Now, this is understandable. I mean, we all want to be liked. We all want to think, uh, have others think well of us and think that we're spiritual or godly or that we know what's going on. And so Jesus addressed this. And he said, when you pray, Matthew 6, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have the reward full. The prayer that is prayed to be heard by men is heard by men alone. God doesn't hear that prayer. I mean, he pays no attention to that because we're not even addressing him, you know, and and we can do this honestly, kind of innocently. Uh, we can fall into it in a prayer meeting that uh, we, we want to say the right things so that others hear that prayer. So this is why entering into the presence of the Lord, focusing your attention to him and praying to your father is so critical that you shut the door on everyone else and everything else, and you're just communing with the one that really makes a difference. Self-exalting prayers are not really prayers at all. They're merely the expressions of a proud heart. So Kyle, uh, it's astounding to me to look in the scripture and see it's possible to pray and for those prayers not to be working <laughs> right. and not not bearing fruit. Yeah, I, I'm just sitting here listening and being reminded of moments and simply pray and 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 pray simply mm -hmm. to think how hysterical it must be to God to think that we would pray in such a way that like impresses Him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, like we could do that. Like we could do that. Yeah. that we, he's like, oh wow, that, yeah. that was the the way you put those words together, yeah. human being I created. Yeah. You know. But he's he's after the heart. He's after. I, I remember vividly we put together this intercessory team at this church I served at uh, in Mississippi, and we, we had some people that were and honestly some of the the pillars of our church. Godly, they were going to come pray one service, attend one service, yeah. and they were willing to do that. But the first time we got in there, uh, in some ways, it was like the who's who, yeah. you know. Of, I mean, they because they genuinely God had used them. And so I, I led in how we were going to pray our way through, specifically the message time. We're praying for people to hear the word. And and uh, the first 10 or 15 minutes, I don't think one prayer got above the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And and we were praying to one another. Yeah. yeah and it was pontificating at best. And and I, I sensed it in my spirit, but you don't know. Told me, what do you do? Yeah. You know, like, what do you do to, to stop that uh, at that moment? And I'll never forget... Uh, uh, a man named Harry who just threw his head back, and I had my eyes open. He threw his head back and big old tears flowing down his face, and he just said, Father, and I'm telling you, here, here we go. the entire room changed. Yeah. And I went, well, now we're praying. To pray to your father. Yeah, yeah. And he just went right to him, and he picked up a conversation yeah. that he already had. Yeah. He didn't have to start one. You know, and... And I thought, man, that, that's real praying. That's it. That's it. So 
our our goal, you know, should be, I, Lord, I want to be a better prayer. Mm-hmm. Man, I just want to go right back into those truths, uh, Bill, and just pray it in, yeah. and, and pray that God help us to to really pray in such a way that's not hindered. Yeah. You know, that we know that we're standing on good ground in your presence because we're trying to get to you. Yeah. So, man, why don't you kick us off? And and yeah. I would encourage you. Don't just listen to us talk about praying or listen to us pray. You pray. Agree with us. Let your heart be expressed to God even now, and I'll close this in a second. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, we want to come even right now and just step into the throne room and shut the door and look at you. And, Lord, you are so beautiful. We see you on your throne high and lifted up and filled with perfect glory. And Lord, what a joy to look at your right hand and see the Son with nail-pierced hands and who's interceding for us. Lord, we're just stunned to be in the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we want to say we're your children. Right. We, we mess up. We, we don't know how to do things right. But Father... Uh, with the disciples, would you teach us how to pray? Just teach us. And, and Lord, keep us from, from wasting time yes. in prayer. Yes. Uh, Lord, we, we, we know your great desire is for your kingdom to come hmm. and your will to be done on earth. And, and that we, for some reason, Lord, there are things that you have said you will not do unless we pray and and pray rightly and so lord for the advance of your kingdom lord we ask not for our sake that would be known as a as a good intercessor lord for your sake for the sake of your kingdom for the sake of things being accomplished and lives being saved and and uh, nations being changed lord would you teach all of us that are listening today uh, how to pray. Yeah, Jesus, I just uh, want to say with that song, I would rather have you than silver or gold. Mm -hmm. Lord, I, I, we would rather really talk to you, uh, Lord, than to play some kind of game. And so, God, I pray for every listener, uh, Lord, for each one of us, your sons and daughters, uh, that we would just walk in through the blood of Jesus Christ, into the throne room of grace and mercy and realize there's no place on planet earth that we belong more than than when we engage with you god because mm -hmm. that's going to be home's going to be with you forever one day and so i i pray that we would engage with you now mm -hmm. and I, I pray you'd help us to do that with such authenticity god with with such uh lord communion that we would breathe in your presence God, that we would talk to you, we'd listen. Listen, God, give us an ear to hear what the sovereign Lord is saying to us. Mm -hmm. And then respond, God, and it would be relational. I pray that the lost man or woman could walk into our times with you. And even if they don't agree, they they would be moved uh, by how real it is, That's right. how authentic. So, Lord, I pray you would do that in such a way that it would ignite a real revival in us individually and it would spread. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you for taking the time to join us on this podcast each week. I would encourage you to share it, to push it to somebody that you know that would be encouraged by this. And we want to take it even beyond this time and resource you in ways. And, Bill, I know you wrote a great book around this. And maybe share a little bit about that with us. Well, uh, this is a book I've I've wanted to write for decades, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called Simply Prayer. And the title is very important because uh, I, it's written to really show people why they should pray and in a very practical way how you enter into the presence of God and how you pray. Uh, you can get that on uh, our One Cry website, onecry.com. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at billelliff.org. Uh, but we would love to 
for to for you to get that copy of that and i think it'll help people i know it'll help people it's great it will really move you into places in your prayer life that you're longing to go mm-hmm. long as it's very helpful uh, there's a lot of books on prayer mm-hmm. you know but i found it for me even personally i was texting you as i was reading it the first time going man it's just good it's just really helpful so get one maybe get one for somebody and for your church it'd be a great resource as well. Well, again, we'll see you next week on here. We're going to te- keep taking this. We'll have a part two here right. of hindrance. Don't get part one and, and miss part two because I, I know some things are coming. So we look forward to seeing you next week.